January's vegetable of the month is beets. In today's video, you'll learn all about how beets grow, and you'll get to see a delicious recipe for a beet salad with an orange balsamic dressing. Yum! Hi, my name is Megan with Land to Learn, and today I want to show you one of my favorite vegetables, beets. I am here at the South Avenue Elementary Garden in Beacon, where there are still beets in the ground. Here are our beet plants at the garden. What plant part can you see? If you said leaves, you're right. The leaves are the part of the beets that you see above the ground. But the part we really want to get is the root. So for that, we have to pull the whole beet plant out of the ground. Let me show you. Here is our beet plant that we want to harvest. So usually I gather up all the leaves. Wow, look at those beautiful purple stems. And you rip it out, give it a good shake to get the extra dirt off. And now you have a beautiful beet plant. Here are the roots, the stems, and on top are the leaves. Our garden beets are pretty small. Let's take a trip to Common Ground Farm to check out some bigger beets. Hello, it's Farmer Leah. I'm out here um, in our beet field at Common Ground Farm uh, where there used to be a lot of beets, but I already harvested them because they are an incredible storage crop. Um, and so they're living inside our cooler for a little while, um, waiting to be distributed to our community. Um, but I did find one that was still growing and here it is. Um, this is what a beet looks like when it comes fresh out of the ground. It still has its greens attached, which are edible. You can cook them and saute them and people really enjoy them. And then the root is the traditional beet that you're probably familiar with. And sometimes they come in different colors. Um, we grow golden ones and candy striped ones. Um, and when you cut into the root, they have this really beautiful color. And if you are the one that's actually cutting them up for your dinner, sometimes they'll actually stain your hands a little bit, which can be really fun and used as a dye um, for uh, dyeing fabrics or making stamps um, and other art projects. Both gardeners and farmers harvest their beet plants before they have a chance to grow a flower and make seeds. So I took a minute to wash off our beet because anytime you're eating a root vegetable, there's usually a lot of dirt on it. So I cleaned it off and now we have our nice, fresh, clean beet ready to be eaten. And the cool thing about eating beets is that they're packed with really good nutrients to help your body. They're high in fiber, in folate, in potassium, in iron. They're really great with vitamin C. And my favorite thing is you can actually use it to color. Let me show you. First, let me take a big bite. Very tasty. Do you see that beautiful purple color? That purple color comes off. So if I touch it, you can use beet dye for all sorts of artistic projects, just like Farmer Leah said. Coloring, painting, you can even create a dye and change the color of clothes. All right, chefs, let's get cooking. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I want to show you how to make a really delicious recipe using beets. It is a beet salad with an orange balsamic dressing. Here's the full recipe that you can pause and write down if you want to make this another time, but I'll show you step by step today. First, you need to gather your ingredients. You need honey, olive oil, balsamic vinegar, Dijon mustard, and garlic to make the dressing. For the salad, you need greens. I chose spinach, but you can also use kale, three beets, an orange, and some feta cheese if you'd like. Next, you need to cook your beets. You can buy them from the store pre-cooked, but I decided to roast mine. To roast beets, you need raw beets. We're using three for this recipe. 
and you want to put them in aluminum foil and you're almost going to create like a little packet. And these beets, part of helping them cook is going to be steam. So you want to pour just a little bit of water onto your aluminum foil and then gather it together and seal up all of the edges so none of that water can escape when it's in your oven. You're going to cook these for about 25 to 35 minutes in an oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. You could do this step in advance to save yourself some time. This recipe uses a scale to weigh out 1.5 ounces of spinach. If you don't have a scale at home, you can just pack one full cup with spinach, really push it down, and that ends up being close to 1.5 ounces. This is the perfect amount of spinach for one serving. If you're making a salad for your whole family, you're gonna to wanna to multiply this amount of greens by the amount of people in your family. Next, we're going to zest our orange. The zest of a citrus fruit is that very outside layer that has color. So for an orange, you're peeling off that orange part. I use a microplane to do this because it's the quickest way, but you can also use a cheese grater just make sure you pick the size that has the really small holes because you want your zest to be in very small pieces. You'll know that you're done zesting the orange when there isn't much color left and it's all in a little pile of orange peel. You can take all that zest and add it to your container. I use a jar, but you can use whatever container you have on hand. And that will be the same container that we put the rest of our dressing ingredients in. Now we need to get the juice out of our orange. We do this by using something called a citrus juicer. It's like a little thing that you put the orange inside of and you squeeze. These juicers come in different sizes. So I quartered my orange or cut it into four equal pieces so it would fit inside of my citrus juicer. Look at all that tasty orange juice. Next up for our dressing, we are going to add the balsamic vinegar. We're going to need two tablespoons. Next up is the honey. For the honey, we need to measure one tablespoon. And these squeeze bottles can be tricky, so I'll give you a little chef's tip. I've learned that when you squeeze a squeeze bottle, of honey for three seconds, it equals about one tablespoon. Next up is the Dijon mustard. For this, we only need one teaspoon. A teaspoon is smaller than a tablespoon. Next, we need a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. The last ingredient for our dressing is garlic. We need just one garlic clove. So first you have to pull apart your garlic bulb to get one clove, and then you can use a knife or another flat object to push down on your garlic and crack it. That makes it way easier to peel off that skin, that outside layer. Next, you can use your knife to chop up your garlic clove, or you can use that microplane again. Now you just have to get the garlic into your jar and your dressing is almost finished. Now that you have everything you need for your salad dressing, you could use a whisk and whisk it. What I usually like to do is I just put a cap on my jar and give it a good shake. And that mixes everything together. The other beauty of using a jar is you can skip some of the measurements because these jars have measurements right on them that help you figure out how much liquid you're putting in. So if you're trying to keep your kitchen just a smidge cleaner, you can skip the step of putting the olive oil into a measuring cup and you can put it right into the jar and just use the measurement lines. Now we have our dressing. Okay, I just pulled the roasted beets out of the oven um, and let them cool for a little bit. And you can do this in advance if you wanna save time, you can always roast the beets like on a weekend day when you have a little bit more time or energy um, and also you can buy them already roasted. There are companies out there 
that make pre-roasted beets so you can skip this step entirely. But when you pull them out of the oven, you wanna let them cool. Check by using a toothpick. If the toothpick goes all the way through nice and easily, then they are ready. And the next thing to do is to peel off the skin so all we have is the delicious inside. Now I will warn you, this makes a mess. Everything that these beets touch at this point are going to turn a beautiful pink, purple, red color. So you can wear gloves if you don't want your hands to get dyed. Now that your beets are roasted, they should be pretty easy to cut through and pretty easy to peel, although they can feel a little bit slippery. So make sure you're going slow so you don't accidentally hurt yourself with the vegetable peeler. I'm using a mandolin to get our beets into really thin slices, but you can also just use a knife. If you are using a mandolin, just make sure you're being really careful so that you don't hurt yourself. That blade is really sharp. It's time to add everything together to make our salad. You're going to mix your beets with your spinach or your kale and kind of mix them together. And then you can add your cheese. This recipe calls for feta cheese, but you can sub in whatever your favorite cheese is or not have any cheese at all. Time to add the dressing. You can add as much dressing as you prefer. I added probably about three tablespoons, but I just poured it and mixed it until it looked right. And after all that, we have a delicious beet salad with an orange balsamic dressing. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you all again soon. Bye for now. Thank you.